Hello, my name is Jacob and I do visual effects advertising for a living for clients like L'Oreal and Reese's, just to name a few. Let me walk you through the entire process in order to make a shot that looks like this. So starting things off, we need to convert our footage into the proper color space. I'm actually in the process of learning an ACES workflow using Blender, and so I needed to convert my Rec. 709 footage into something that I can use in ACES. The basic process is just about replacing the LUTs folder and the default OCIO file in the Blender directory, and then relaunching Blender. I actually followed a couple of great videos by Alfie Vaughn and Eden Spiegel in order to learn the process, so I definitely recommend checking them out. Links are down in the description below. Now it's okay if you don't know every step of the visual effects process. I have clients all the time that need special needs for a specific project. For example, I needed to dust up my Houdini skills for a client that needed some simulations and I needed to learn as fast as possible. That's when I jumped over to this video's sponsor, Skillshare. Since I was in a time crunch and the client needed results fast, I found an amazing Houdini course by Rafi Bedros, your first hour in Houdini. It had everything from setting up particle interactions to fine-tuning surface tension for realistic motion. It was great to quickly recap the basics of sims for a artist like me who is coming over from a different program. Skillshare is great for learning as they are the largest online learning community and so they have multiple courses that can cater to your needs. Skillshare's learning paths also allow for curated class collections to take a more personal approach to your learning. Having structured lessons like that saved me so much time compared to digging through countless scattered tutorials online. If you're serious about upping your visual effects game, whether it's compositing, color grading, simulations, you name it, Skillshare has a ton of classes to help you level up your skills. The first 500 people to use my link in the description below will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare, so check it out and start learning today. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video, but anyways, let's go ahead and jump back into it. After the video was converted to the proper color space, we need to do some camera tracking. I use Synthize for camera tracking, which gives me much better results than Blender ever can. Now this scene is a little different because I want to have the button as well as a product on the ground. To make things a little bit easier, I'm going to be separating them out into two different parts since they will have two different ground heights and so they are basically two separate effects. First I wanted to focus on the buttons since I thought that was going to be easier to implement. I made the railing the ground plane in Synthize and imported the data into Blender. From there it was super simple, just adding a red metallic cylinder and animating it rising and lowering when my finger presses it. In order to make it even more realistic, I created a very simple finger object where I projected the texture of my actual finger on the object, and then I animated it to follow along with my finger in the video. That and adding some texture of the footage onto the ground made the reflections bounce onto the button which made it feel a lot more realistic. Next, let's deal with the bag. I went into Synthize and selected the ground points and made a brand new ground plane. I imported the data back into the same Blender project and tried to align the cameras as closely as possible to each other so that it would help us model. I found this amazing model on cargo in the retail stores pack and imported it into the scene. There are many ways to light for visual effects, but I don't have a 360 camera so I wasn't able to capture my own HRI for this scene. In order to get around this, I usually find HRIs online, Polyhaven is a great resource and I actually found a pure sky one that worked perfectly. Finally, inside of Blender I wanted to add a teleportation type of effect. Now I've never really used Geometry Nose before and so I wanted to challenge myself to learn something new for this project. I followed a great tutorial by Viscous Realm going over this effect, so big shout out to them for teaching me. I played around with a few nodes, but all credit goes to them, so I'll have the link in the description down below. Now finally, it was time to render everything out. I ended up separating the button and the bag into their own renders since I wanted to have more control in the composite. The only thing I had to change between them was making sure the right camera was activated before rendering each pass. I set up a multi-pass EXR sequence using the file output node in Blender. I highly recommend you artists out there start using multiple passes in your workflow since it'll really boost your realism. I actually just released a huge Blender visual effects course going over the entire multi-pass workflow, so if you're interested, check out my new website jacobzirkle.com or the link in the description down below. Here's a quick view of all the nodes I set up in the Blender compositor if you want to take a pause to see what I did. Anyways, next up is compositing. This is part of the process that will make our visual effects really match with our footage. Since we're using an ACES workflow inside of Blender and Nuke, I was able to match the color of the button super accurately since the colors match right out of the gate. Now, in order to mask out my finger, I use the copycat node inside of Nuke. Copycat is basically a machine learning node that will allow you to only roto out a couple of frames and then AI will do the rest for you. It saves a ton of time and for me, it gave a really accurate result. 
After the button, now it's time to move on to the bag. I actually broke up the bag and the balls into separate passes so that I can composite them separately without affecting one another. I did the same process for matching the color as I did with the button, and then I simply just set the balls layer over top of the bag layer, and with a simple roto node, I was able to hide the bag before the balls came on, and then uh, make the bag actually appear after the transition took effect. Finally, in order to do the shadow, I've actually been using the shadow catcher pass inside of Blender. Instead of actually using it as a multiply operation in the layer stack, what you can do is you convert it to a alpha channel and then use that alpha channel to actually color correct the footage itself. The reason we do this is because shadow actually inherits some of the color value and so it'll be more realistic to match the shadows. After some final tweaking, we were left with this final shot. a thing or two about my process that you can apply to your own work. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Check them out in the description and pinned comment down below. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next video.